page, you can also order. Okay. So we're called to order and have no public comment other than the people here. Roll call. Sure, I could do the roll call yeah. if you want. Okay. Uh, Wade Pollock. Here. Jonathan Gifford is not here. Bill Postick. Here. Peter Lake is not here. And Caitlin Foy. Here. Good. She's here remotely. So you do have a quorum. Okay, so the uh, the beer the bee box beer box. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> the bee box it did come from New York. It's it's not as quite as big as I thought that it would be, but it's still you know sizable that you can see it from a distance, and it's it's very nicely done. Um, it's more about education than anything else. So I thought the signage would go nicely with. I sent that out to everyone. Did you guys, did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I'm not sure if we get the township to do placards for that, if everyone's okay with that. Yeah. Wait, were you, were you thinking for the time being that that, that signage was almost uh, temporary, like we could just do a laminated poster six as opposed months? to- Is six months good or five I, they'll, months? They should last that long and then we could get a more permanent uh, sign made. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking, just temporary, just through the fall and then, uh, yeah. for visitors this year. And you know, next year we can- Yeah, and then we can get something that's gonna last really well. Okay. okay. And then um, I had, uh, gosh, what is your name? Uh, you helped me with the uh, the Meadow Preserve. Uh, with Jenna. The bee box. Is Jenna Kirkland. No. Um, no. Lindsay. 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 Yes. Lindsay. Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Um, Lavin. 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 Yes. So she, I asked her to look at um, these bees and what supports them. So she did a lot of research and found five plants that would be great for these bees and other native bees in Pennsylvania and some butterflies and moths. So um, you know, I wanted to plant those plants in there. They're kind of standalone. You plant them, put a little mulch around, walk away, and they're done. And they, they'll, they'll spread a little bit. They're not, they're not invasive. They're not vigorous spreaders or anything like that. But they'll stand up to some of the invasive plants in there as well. So I, I asked Mike McGraw to take a look at the list and see if he'd be okay. Plant. If it's okay with him, then, then I'll do something a little more formal with the group here. Get it with whoever at EAC, I don't know who would have to approve it. Township and EAC, I assume? I would think so. I'll find out who. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'd be EAC. And, and I, I would just get input from Newtown New Town Square and Bloom as well. We're fine with it. How big, of a, how big of an area is this? So if you go down to the path and then you go to the left, have you been there, Bill, to the Meadow Preserve? So if you go down the bottom of the hill, there's, yeah. a, there's a, board, a board wall. Yeah. And the township's installed. And then that goes to a path that splits this way. You go to the left, that ends where it splits again, right there. So it's close to the creek where they need mud to right. fill these tubes with mud for the rags. And the plants could be put in, in that little meadow area, which is not cut. But does the, does the does the site need preparation? That's my question. No. So we, it's, this is like muddy area and we just take these like bamboo things or stalks or something. And so they're going to come bare root plants, you know, okay. in a, a pot and we're just going to put them in like you would any perennial. And, and the bee box itself is just going to be on a post, a, a normal four by four post that attaches on with a piece of hardware that they provided. It's a pretty simple problem. When does all this happen? Do you I see? don't know. I don't know. I was hoping June, but you know, it might get pushed out to July. So, does it matter? It can, it, it, no, the, the organization that provided the, the bee box, they don't care. They're, they seem to be open to anything. Okay. I, I think that they'll be very happy with what we're doing. So, and I did talk to Janet, um, for balance about it. She wants to put the box back off of the path so that people won't bother. I don't think it's a good idea. Got it. 
So, I mean, if we can do it in June, I'll send something out, and then if anyone can make it, they can make it. And Bill, you, if you want to visit there, you don't have to walk all the way there. It's it's very it's much the little, beginning. You can actually drive down that road and park at the end of that road yourself. And if anybody's asked, you just tell them you can park somewhere. If you're bothered, you can go back there and park. But it's a, it's a little bit of an incline, and it's to get down to it. It's a little rugged. You might want to check it before you get too far down there. There's long paths. Six. Yeah, long pants, really. Yeah. Long sleeves. But you don't, yeah, so you don't, if you ever go there, you don't have to worry about just making a trek in there. A few miles or something, really. It's big. Drive on that road. You just park at the end. You know, just do it. <laughs> your own official, you know, your own official parks and rec business. Yeah. You're you're visiting it, and you're checking it out, and yeah. you're just telling them that if anyone bothers you, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to go. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So then the shade sale at Brookside. I talked to George today earlier today about the shade sale at Brookside. Mm -hmm. We're thinking more of an umbrella. Yeah. One of the right. tables fits it. It will provide, you know, maybe a bigger umbrella. Are you talking with this? We looked at some structures at Garrett Williamson, and I know two of the supervisors like that, but that's a more solid structure. So the umbrella, are you looking at, we were thinking maybe if we got like a, do you ever see the ideas? We have a, a commercial grade pole in the center and kind of like a carousel look. So it would be the sales, you could orchestrate, get the colors that you would want, Orchestrate them in whatever way, or are you just talking about? So here's a question: it, Do you have a place that you're envisioning getting them, or uh, you need a, a place? Because I was going to put Wade in contact with uh, one of the vendors that we get a lot of our park equipment from, right. and you know, if if they have something that fits the bill for what you were, you know, what you were thinking of, then then we, we'd we be, were thinking more parents and grandparents take their children there. Getting shade, right? More so. Than right, and we also we didn't want to have anything as a permanent structure. Like there are some that have poles that are, and then they're a hard plastic. Right. We don't want to do that because multiple reasons: the trees and all the other things. But we want to have some ability to have some flexibility to have the shades sails be moved. So by having one major point, and and the ones we looked at right now were rough draft were between four and eleven thousand dollars, and these were just. Simple sales structures with, but you have to have commercial grade poles for everything and problems. So if you want to look at that vendor and, um, but I think what we are looking is just timing some area, not necessarily the whole area, but just pockets of shade throughout it. Cause we're also looking with the parks, the pop-up garden, hopefully getting some of those trees that will provide another area of shade. So, so, so Wade, if, if you're thinking of a four to $11,000 Expense that's that's a budget item. Yes. Sure. yes. If you're talking about getting some umbrellas, that's probably something I could do under the park budget. But it, right. So let's take a look at what what we have. Maybe we'll take a look at the, the spot to see. Can I re make a recommendation? There is a, a, a playground equipment company here in town on yes. Reese's Road. Yes. Yes. And General I would go to them and see if they have anything. And I would say, and then go on bended knee and see if they would like to make a donation. And if they'd like to make a donation and get a little plaque or so, perhaps all of this could be provided by them and it would give them notoriety in their hometown. Yes. You could talk to them. There's, I think that's great. All right, I was going to knock on their door anyway. Yeah. Right. And, and I, when it gets time for the playground equipment in Greer Park, I mean, I think, I think that they should at least get an opportunity to bid. You no, know, they like, will. yeah. You know, like we want to, we want to help local business. Absolutely. Okay. Hopefully they're co-stars. That would be the best scenario. Right. Because then you don't have to go. Co-stars is the, is the state purchasing program. Okay. Yeah. If a company is co-stars, then you could just go and buy what you need to buy from them. And you don't have to worry about the same bidding requirements. Right. Okay. If they're, if they're not, then you just have to go through the bidding process. I mean, it could be, and could it not be that we buy one umbrella is there a hole in the middle of the table that's there right now? There is. One of the two tables has a hole for an umbrella. So, I mean, you, what you could do is buy one umbrella for this year 
and then put it on the capital budget request thing for right. 2020. Right. Two. So if you just like, if yeah. you want, if you really want to go right. all out for it, right. right. If you just want to get the umbrella for this year, just to get us some relief, absolutely. But I'm thinking we we talked about some opportunities for color down there, really enhancing Brookside, and it really, I mean, besides Newtown Square and Meadows Preserve. It is the largest park in Newtown Township. I, I agree, but I just think it would be nice to show people right now this Something. year some kind of shape. Yep. That's what I think. All right. I will talk to this person and then I'll look through the catalog and see what you find there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, there's some kind of happy medium. What about the sales that Steve mentioned that he already had purchased? He didn't, he didn't purchase them. They were just talking about that. So. Oh. Yeah, they were talking about them for the library patio, but that was not done. So they, there, there is nothing on site to, to move out there. That was my misunderstanding. Right. There is another way I understood that you don't necessarily have to have the commercial grade poles, and it would be wiring that would be connected to the, that would be bolted to the trees. So it would be a raised above. It's far less expensive. However, it's contingent upon the strength of the trees and you might be degrading the trees slightly by, you know, putting screws and wires into a tree structure. So that would be a concern. Better bring that to the EAC. Right. Yeah, and the Shade Tree Commission. Right, the Shade Tree Commission. Yeah, it would not be environmentally it. the best way to handle it, yeah. but it is a possible solution. Mm -hmm. And, and we have to be mindful of weather that it's going on like right now, these kind of crazy wind storms. Yes. Oh, right. You know, like we could spend a great deal of money and trying to put sails up and then the whole thing gets mangled. Yep. Right. Right. And then, yeah. I mean, that's why a capital project like, like 11,000, that's going to be designed for that kind of a situation versus, you know, other solutions. All right. And our farmer's market is tomorrow night. Um, it's, it's our night as Parks and Rec right. for a farmer's market. So I'll be there. I'm going to try and get some uh, propaganda. Uh, so are you going to have the, out and hopefully I really want you to push the, uh, the, the concert. Are you going to have a concert poster? Yes. yes. And could you have it on dry foam board or, or something, something big that we could? I didn't know what the tent what, we're set so up. We, we have a table. Board. This size, okay. this size, and I'm bringing my chairs. I have two or three chairs, and, and yeah, you know, well, I could do. You know the, the student boards that are the tri for like science fair yes, projects. Yes. If we just get that and post the you know, yoga in the park series, the concert, and any other details yes, yes. on that, the we've yoga. got instant pop up. Plus, I have flyers for the for the to hand out for the concert as well as for the yoga classes. So I just I think that I would keep it simple visually. I think yoga. Concert. Those are the two things we don't talk about anything else. We just what if, but historic days is tomorrow yes, Saturday. I know that's, okay. But that's just I mean if they come and they say, Can we put brochures? Okay. Sure. Okay. You know, but but if you make it too, too busy, busy, yeah, nobody agree. will know they won't understand. So we're gonna put that behind us or on the you table. You can just put it on the table and then we could stand on each side. Right. So and then and the, and if somebody people. comes, you could say, Hey, and they say parks and rec, what do you guys do here? This is what we do. I, I did make a flyer up. I posted on Facebook. I don't know if anyone saw it. And it just lists what, what we're doing, what we've done. Or, yes. Yeah, what we've done and what we're doing this year, event wise and project. So you're going to bring that too? Are yeah, and I, that might be a third thing for the board. Well, I mean, maybe, or or not, maybe it's a handout. Maybe you hand it to them. I yeah. mean, is it a piece of paper? Yes. Just change. You have the start time for the yoga at four o'clock. It's 5 30 to six. So could you just say that? I have the flyers that I talked about, 50 of each. It's 5.30 to 6? 5.30 to 6.30. 6 30, okay. All right. So I'm going to be there. Caitlin, are you going to be there tomorrow night? or? Um, I'm going to try to be there, but I'm not sure, uh, you know, what, what time. I will be there for sure. And it's not a problem if you can't make it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll be there. And wait, do you want me to bring? I have um, by. 11 by 14 printed copies of Greer Park option B and C, the new revised ones. Do you want that just to well, people? B and C is not. The, the, the new option of what was released. It just shows the, the transverse yeah. section yes. coming out. Do you want that or should we not? I don't want to confuse the situation. I'd rather not talk about Greer because it's so many great things and that should have its own private 
thing, but if you want me to bring it, I will. We're going to have interest there. And I mean, the, the plan Let's is what the plan is now. Okay. It's done. You know, okay. The, the plan's done. Okay. There's nothing if somebody do says, what is, you know, what, what's the newest with Greer? You can bring it up. It doesn't have to necessarily be standing up. Maybe then you bring yeah, it up. That'll be just a piece of paper. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sheila, do you have by any chance have something that we can use as a tablecloth? And do you have anything plastic, not valuable, but just. Yeah, some, I can bring a tablecloth. Like a, a party type. Yep. Our green is our color, but it doesn't. Make oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. The night before the bloody thing, he's asking me for specific colors to be cloth. <laughs> Would you like me to have it ironed as well? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to bring real cloth tablecloth. That's great. <laughs> okay. So, wait, I'll get the board then. Okay. I get the. the you have one? Or? I will get one. I'll go tonight or tomorrow. Do we have um, do we have something here we could use? Is there a easel with a poster board? Or? I think we have easels. I don't think we have poster board. Yeah, I, I can buy it's if they're like four or five dollars. Yeah, yeah. Trifold, it's yeah. It's a, it's right. a, you know the, you right. know what I'm talking about. Trifold a science board. fair project. You open up, you get yeah. the trifold. Okay. Yeah. Bingo. We before you leave tonight, we could see if I've got a easel here, and you can take it with you if you want. All right, okay. We'll, okay. All right. And the, the Greer Park Temporary Garden, it just, you know, it just became so much work. We, we had, what, seven lengths of hose. We we're going to ask the community to get involved with something. And you have to coil up the hose. I mean, it's one yes. thing to get the hose. We found the hose. But then whoever uses the hose has to put the seven lengths of it. That's endless, you know, and that's really only people that have upper body strength can do that. So, so the, the seeds found a very nice home. They're in the front garden. Of the Stratford Friends School, and they're labeled. You know, awesome. they have those little metal labels, oh, nice. and they put awesome. the they put the 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 seed packets into the label holders. Oh. So so it it's not something that just evaporated. It it has a very nice ending. I mean, Good. and the children did it, and they took photos. I've never seen the photos, but they assured me there are photos. Awesome, wonderful. That happened. <laughs> So Luke uh, approached us and he, want, he wants to do a, a project. We came up with tree planting at Goshen Trail. Um, he's a little bit shy, so we're asking him to do a presentation. It's kind of part of the, the project. So I haven't heard back from him yet. We're just waiting for him to confirm. And rather than have him do that in front of three times, you know the horror of that three times for him we thought one would be better i think it's the shade tree commission is where he's going to present but he's going to do a, a write-up to provide the eac before he does presentation will be after very nice young man his mother we met his mother we went and looked on the trail george has been involved he did a survey of what trees we have so so George, did you see my note to you yesterday? Um, the email I was over at SAP, seeing if they didn't want to renew for their uh, business association membership, and then they said, "Oh, we have two trees here that we got to get rid of." And I didn't see that. I, I sent you an email. I thought but there's no guarantees that anything I send ever goes anywhere. So, I mean, um, it may you may have it, but anyway, they're offering two trees, and I don't know what kind they are. And I sent you a picture. <laughs> um, and somebody can transplant them and they're ready to go. I'm, they'll dig them out and they'll deliver them wherever you want them. I mean, they're, they're very nice about it. Uh, and they said, I wish we would have seen you before because we just threw away a lot of trees. Oh. <laughs> Do we know what kind of trees they are and how tall they'll be? This is how it looks. It's the two, the two front trees. Wow. The transplant, are they ball root? What are they? They're no, no, they're root, regular root. Oh, they've been in there? Yeah, yeah, they've been in there. And they're in the way they have. And they're constantly revamping the whole thing and stuff. So, I mean, I don't know how successful they're. Can you show it to George? Yes. Um, yeah. When was it? Was this yesterday, Paul? Correct. Maybe it was a Texas. Not here. Not here? Okay, well, here, there. he's handing it to you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, wow. 
And you know, they'll deliver it. I mean, all you have to do is just say, we want, they won't pack it in, but they'll bring the root ball to you if you say where you want it to go. But it's great. So we can actually plan the plan. Oh, wow. Have a whole dog. Yes, right. We've done a relatively quick period of time. Nice. Right. Who's this for? SAP, but I'm not, I, they're in a hurry. So I, you know, like if, if this has to go to the Chaitry Commission and if I have to wait for the next Wednesday. No, and, you know, I, I, I think under the circumstances, I think we could turn it around pretty quick. So, uh, and I, yeah, have, no. and I you know, and it can go wherever you want. I mean, I just, I would say, you know, George, you're sort of the pivotal person, but together with Wade, you just say, we want to hear. Yeah. And they may thrive and they may die, you know, right. like they've been sitting in the ground there. Who knows when they dig them out? We lost a couple at Greer, didn't we? Yes. Or I mean, at uh, Brookside. 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 We did. Can you, can you send me an email to me again? I will. I, I appreciate that with the picture. Then. Yeah. Do it we'll find a home for them quick. All right. And so uh, the 2022 budget request, I guess we're going to have to see where we're at with the sales. Um, if we're going to go that route or not. Is there anything, anyone it's, else going it on? It seems to me a little bit excessive. Honestly. I mean, just for the shade. Yes. I, mean, I would start with umbrellas. Yes, 11,000. I mean, 11,000 for well, it seems very, from an environmental standpoint, they're saying that, you know, we're in a situation where global warming is impacting all of us, that Brookside is in direct sun constantly, and the equipment. So uh, I think it's something that we need to consider when we're designing parks and having shade as a complement to enjoying the parks. Um, so, Caitlin, what would you think? I mean, you have children. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Brookside gets really hot, especially in the summertime. You see, but you know, this gets a lot of use in the mornings and late late afternoons, and then sometimes around lunch, maybe a couple people around the picnic table. But I think uh, immediately putting the umbrella in the table is a great idea, and then trying to uh, make it a, a budget item for the the shade sales. I know what you're talking about at Garrett's Way. They have really nice um, shades that they can put away for the winter months and then get back out. Here's my little ones, uh, and then get back out for uh, you know for spring and summertime. So uh, I, I think that's a great idea moving forward, and and also looking at all the other parks and thinking you know if that's uh, you know that would be helpful. Like you know like you said, it's get it's getting hotter. We have global warming, and if if it's too hot to use um, the equipment, then, you know, it's a missed opportunity. Well, great. With the, and, and we are looking to see with the, the next item with the pop-up gardens, we did ask that the pop-up gardens consider Brookside. And so it is Janet and Cindy did so far agree to maybe one or two trees from the pop-up garden to be considered for Brookside. I know it's all the powers to be still have to decide that. But that would be, um, I asked if, if that were the case, that they maybe talk with George and figure out, George, when would be a good time to have those planted? Would it be beneficial to wait till the fall because of the extreme heat that we're gonna be going into, which will put stress on the plants, especially after what they've been through with being in the pop-up garden and whatever works for your schedule. But I would love to see some of the plants and the trees in at Brookside as well, um, because what we did three years ago, a lot of that was, destroyed by the deer and the wildlife that's in there. And some, you know, some of the trees, we, we lost three trees in there. We've lost all the perennials by the signage, the deer have eaten them. So, you know, we're looking to do some instant beautification around the play area, but I would love if we could look to do something to beautify the um, mulch area and the trees just as a drive-by could because Brookside is visible from not only their road, but from Bryn Mawr Avenue. So anything we can do to enhance Brookside would be really, I think, helpful. Well, George, considering what Sheila just says, maybe if you get these two trees from SAP, maybe that's sort of, because they're instantly big. Right, Let yeah. me, and again, I want to evaluate them. I just want to make sure that we're wise with whatever our placement is. Yep. Um, but with regard to the, the trees that are in the pop-up garden, um, I probably would lean toward wanting to get them in the ground sooner rather than later because okay. they're really hot. Okay. I agree, I agree, I agree. Yep. 
I just was worried about over committing you to watering them for the year without checking with your schedule. Yeah, I just I'd be worried that they might not make it till the fall. Yep. yep. Are they candidates to replace the ones that died in Brookside then? Do you have do you have ideas of where you want to put those as well? So the, there was one red maple Correct. that died at Brookside, and I want to replace that with a red maple because yes. it's a, there is a red maple there right. in the pop-up. And there so there is, but I think I am, I may have a red maple in the Public Works Tree Nursery, and it would be the same tree essentially, yeah, okay. uh, as opposed to being a, a different age right. tree. So I, I I may try to do that, but I want to look at the other ones that, that okay. failed along there, like where the where the deer attacked, and, yeah. and there's also, some that if the ground was just too wet. Yeah, we ran into the problem. Remember the the ones near to Brookside uh, and Gridmore Avenue when we dug up the area, it was saturated with water. Do you recall that? So. We were looking maybe a swamp ma maple or something other in consideration because you were literally like digging into the water. Yeah, there are. It's, it is wet. There. Yeah, it's a wetland in the back area. Yeah. But I, I would say yes, the two trees from SAP and the the ones from the pop up garden will 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 accelerate finding a home for them. Perfect. Now, um, Cindy Mahalo sent something through that she had designed. I Designed for Brookside, putting plants in now. So I, I who's going to manage that? Is that? I think it goes in a park. Is, it, is that park and rec's responsibility then, or is that still? Park and rec would certainly have to approve the the concept of it, and and because um, again, anything that happens with the pop up garden is still they're still discussing that, right. you know, because because. It, Janet has one idea, Cindy has one idea, you know, other various folks have, have weighed in on what they would like to see happen with, with all those plants. So if it's going to be going into a park, Park and Rec needs to have. A yeah, and I discussion. think they were only looking at, there's 135 plants. So I think they were just looking to get like 25 or 30 of those for Brookside because the library has needs. The meadow preserve has needs. So, pollinator garden. Yeah, the pollinator. So I think it was no one particular area. Right. I think it was just distribution and making sure it was something that was beneficial to all the areas. So my concern was more that you know, what are we going to what are we doing to the parks? At Brookside, I went and looked at the other stuff that we've done over the years, and it's run over with weeds. I mean, you know, COVID was a problem. That right. I'm sure. Who's, who's going to manage that going forward? Who's going to take care of what's already there? I guess we're going to plant these with whatever's in, in, the, in there already. We're going to add some and then feed it and mulch it. Well, what we do for the Butterfly Garden is, as the chairman of Bloom, I call for a, a, a cleanup committee. You know, I, right. I think what you have to do is call for members and us, Sheila and me to come out. And, yeah, I think and, we're just- but, but it needs the members to so, tally ho. So it, it'll be park and rec responsibility to maintain whatever's installed going forward. I mean, uh, managing that effort. Yeah, I mean, we always will help, but we're not gonna be able to, Public Works is not gonna take over uh, something like that. Right, you know, it I, would be, I, yeah, I don't wanna- We support. Down. I don't wanna add anything to their work either. So then call for, you know, think of a day and it probably should be a weekend. And, you know, and I don't know, you know, talk to your bill. And I think if we do a combination effect and you ask EAC, you ask Parks and Rec, you ask Newtown Square and Bloom, right. and we all see from all of those groups, if we could, I think to try to suggest that we have, you know, those groups plan 135 for them, I think is a little hard. So I would say that, um, you know, the township's going to want to decide the way it wants to allocate the budget. And, 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 and Sheila, you know, right on top of that, there needs to be a plan, right, which is, you know, which, which discusses, okay, these are going to go in here, but what happens on day two? What happens right. on day three? Right. How do they get, you know, maintained and how do they get watered when they need to be watered and all that? Right. It just needs to be part of the plan. Exactly. Right? And if it's going into a park, then yeah, park and rec should, should, you know, absolutely have weigh in on that plan. But yeah, so I just want to make, you know, if we do anything, I, I want to make sure it's perennial, right. it's easily maintained. You know, I, I don't want us to be parks and rec and garden club. Yes. We have a, we have a lot of work. Right. To do with parks and rec. 
would we be able to get access to the water truck just for, because all you would have to do for the perennials is help them establish for the first few months. And then after that, the, the ones that are selected are all native and they're all, you know, would be fine next year. It's just getting through the difficult period. I think it's all part of the plan. Yeah. I do. I, I just think that that has to be part of what, what Cindy would present to Park and Rec about that or, or whichever, you know, wherever they were looking to, to plan. And again, I know, there, there's some discussion about kind of spreading them out throughout, and then there's there's you know other discussion of they want to use them all in one spot and make a you know a, a garden with all of these things in one location, and th they just need to make their determination as to okay what happens with all these things and and, and what's the plan for them. Or what but the, the the time is going to be next Monday. It's yes. coming up soon. Well, next Monday is when we go and take it all down and bring it back. And and what I what I said to Janet and Cindy when I when I met with them about the pop up garden coming down, I said we'll move it back here. We'll put it somewhere where we could water it for the whatever the duration of the time is. Um, but you need to come up with what the plan is going to be for you know distribution of them. So yes, the immediate is it comes down. It goes somewhere in public works where I can water it, but it just can't be there. So for six I think months. that Sheila, I mean, I'm just trying to think it through. That Wade doesn't have to write the plan. Bill no. does not have to write the plan. It's between these two ladies, Janet and, uh, and Cindy, that are going to write the plan. But Sheila, I think you should write an email to them. Oh, wait, absolutely. Because I asked them, them for what you, what you, what you want. Reserved and oh, we did. We oh, did. did. This okay. is where they came from because okay. we asked them to consider Brookside right, in their right, desire right. Of, of where they will, and they it's obviously up to whoever the powers to be to decide how those. All it was was drawing attention to the needs for Brookside to. Is kind there of a, is them. there a time by which you want this plan done? I mean, it should be done in a couple months. I think that's pro first of all, oh, you don't want to keep the plants in those pots that right. long. And yeah. uh, you, you say months, it shouldn't it be weeks. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not, I mean, the park and rec appropriately should have weigh in on what the plan is, not writing the plan, but blessing the plan. So then, but I'm trying to say that they need to write, they being Cindy and Janet have to write the plan in the next two weeks. Correct. And then you can, that gives you time and the parks committee, the official committee, time to weigh in. To weigh on, in on. A plan, a plan that they that they propose, but we need to write to them that they have, that their plan is due in two weeks. Right. So, from Parks and Rec's perspective, since you're looking at putting in a tree or two, and possibly just you know twenty, we're talking like maybe ten uh, cone flowers, maybe bee bobs, and you know, and some. Um, you're not, you're not, yeah. We're not putting a garden in yet. Yeah, this is you're talking 2025 20, plants to the tops, and it would be in that area. I mean, so is Parks and Rec supportive yeah. of this? Or my, my preference would be that they did something at the sign and yes. on the other side, and it doesn't obstruct the view, so it's going to need to survive some arid conditions there as well, sunny conditions. Right. Well, all the Dress up the entrance on. just a little bit. But nothing, see now the inside the gated area would probably be better protection from the deer, which are the ones that have destroyed a lot of the plants that you put in there before. So you don't want anything inside the play area. There's already stuff there that's not taken care of. So you know, the, the plan should include correcting whatever's there as well, right? Right. So, but should we also, I get it that we want to say, okay, Newtown Square and Bloom and EAC and Parks and Rec do that. Should we also be looking to say, okay, if we're going to put these things, can we, I mean, I know public works is overdrawn, but shouldn't that be kind of part of the planning of care and maintenance for a park? It should be part of the proposal. <clears throat> what, I, what I would not be thrilled if I saw the proposal was public works, you handle it all okay. afterwards. That, I, I, don't think that's, <clears throat> I don't think that's setting the project up for success. And I don't think that's, that's fair to, I think there needs to be an ongoing care plan if, if, if something's going to be planted, how is it going to be cared for? And again, we participate and we help and support all those things. I just don't want us to be the, I get it, the, get the whole no, I understand. weight of it. Right, Cindy, you're 
Janet will put something together and send it to us. I'll, I'll ask them. I, I think Cindy just looked at the, I put forth a request and I think Cindy just looked at that and said, what would be something to consider? So I, I can't speak for Cindy or Janet, but I will speak with them and ask them to, to see what their thoughts are and let them take it from there. And there's an EAC meeting on Monday. Yep. So I mean, that you know, they could get battered around there too. <laughs> and the Greer Park Master Plan uh, will should be out shortly. It was sent to DCNR for uh, their review. They'll make some minor corrections, most likely, and send it back to us. The supervisor will say, oh, have to uh, agree to that, and then it'll go back to them, and then it'll be published. Hoping within a month. Or so. And long time coming. Yes, and the three grants replied for. Um, I, I think we did well. Yeah, I, I guess you never know. I don't, I don't know what happens. I have no experience there, but I know we put forth you know, good, good effort. What's the total dollar amount if you could put all three together? Over 800,000, I believe. Oh my God. Yes. That's phase one. That's phase, yes. 800,000? That's phase one. It's hydrology. Yeah, we're looking for other. 800,000, really? Yeah, we're hydrology. looking for other. Funds as well, yeah. Oh my God. Well, the whole project is probably that much. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I don't cheat. <laughs> well, the hydrology is is part is really yeah, yeah, is the, that's the major issue of of the um, phase one. Removing that stream. There's a lot of work to do. A lot of repair buffers. Uh, Removing the silt. I mean, that's studies, all. Studies. Yeah. All the uh, stormwater runoff management. All that. Would it be fair to ask here if, um, you know, they're building phase two of Ellis Preserve and that's gonna be all the stores and restaurants and that sort of thing and they're grading all that. And is there, are you guys concerned or is there concern or if you guys have an EAC meeting, the stormwater, we don't want more stormwater to be added to Lewis Run so that you guys do, I mean- if, Fox's Run or? Well, that, yeah. whatever that run is yes, that run. behind yeah. there. I mean, you. What would be really tragic is that if Greer Park gets fixed and then somebody forgot to look at the stormwater coming off of phase two and the whole thing gets re whatever, silted up. And I think Cindy has actually been looking at that and contacting people about the issue. Well, I, I just I know that she did contact out. Right, I just wouldn't want that to be lost. Yeah, I know, but and then I believe that um, Ellis Preserve uh, DBG expanded their basins, they put in a filtration system, they put in tarps right. uh, to look at those things. And I believe that Cindy reported them to the appropriate authorities to make sure that they were uh, doing everything possible to follow, follow best practices. So that's what I believe. George, do you know anything different from that? I believe that to be the case. Yep. <laughs> yes, that's what I know as well, yep. Uh, the bocce ball court, I somewhat delinquent on that. So I'm going to try and reach out to Belmont still. Okay. Um, knock on their door. I don't know if you want to go with me, Paul. <laughs> Who's Belmont? Belmont. Or Delmont Utilities. I'm oh, sure, yeah. If they would help us with, it would need to get in, I, I guess about four inches. So the, the court itself is going to sit on stems, kind of. There's something to look at. If we went to, Yes. Delma. Is there something that we can? I have cross sections. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Illustrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go right. with you. And then uh, that's going to also include some kind of bio swales. Uh, the paint scheme for the for gable, uh, it's starting to look like it'll probably be late summer. Get that done. This issue still, I, I don't know what's happened. I've talked with them about social restrictions. So if they've loosened up and they can do it early, you know, we'll, we will, but right now it's starting to look like uh, fall. We just want as much heads up. Once they have a direction, we want as much heads up because we're, we're now in the busy season for the uh, for Bill, the vendor, that was gonna be supplying the paint uh, right. and the, the prep work and all that. So he, he was, he had time when we were originally looking at doing it. Yes. He'll need to make time when we do it to, to, 
the next go around. So we just want to make sure that, that we give them heads up. But in the, the bathroom uh, at Drexel Lodge Park, they, these, they've really done a lot of work. I mean, they have sketches and you would not believe is it. Is it good? Done. Yes, it's just, it's stunning, yeah. Is there a way to work? Sheila has put us on to Patricia Davis, who's a retired art teacher from Norristown High School. And is there a way to, to is she gonna be in the way if we bring her into the picture or should we wait for and use her in a different? Pocket? Yeah, and I think Patricia wants to kind of just be a worker bee, not, she doesn't wanna take responsibility or okay. run a project because she's overwhelmed with a lot of other things she does. All right, right. And well, I'm so, overwhelming yeah. her. I mean, yeah, well, she's, she's, she's monitoring the she's pop up garden. Right. And she also week, works at the, uh, she volunteers at the food pantry yeah. and she volunteers at Tyler Arboretum and she has a full life agenda. So I would not want to overdo it to the point. I did talk with her and yes, it's, she'll help us. So I just have to get this out. Um, when I was at SAP, they're taking apart two cottages. And so they have all the furniture. They have beds, dressers, all that furniture. Oh, wow. And you might know where yeah. it's supposed to go. Uh, yeah, I can give you a name right away. Sounds good. If you could email me that. Green drop. It's in green drop. Oh. Really? Green drop right here? Green drop. Yep. They take all of the, they take, they can't take mattresses, but everything else they can take. They take the disc the pulp. Um, it's an incredible program, what it does. Yeah. Fine. Done. And the water bottle filling station, we'll get to that in the fall. Um, the back boxes, um, we're, I think we've marked spots. George and I mm -hmm. have worked out a schedule. <laughs> concert uh I, I i guess we're good we're yep we'll be there if everybody can show up i don't know if caitlin are you going to attend the concert yep yeah i'll be there okay what time so do you want us there you, you know yeah, yeah okay what time do you want us there for setup oh i don't know yeah, well, I would say three o'clock because four o'clock. Yeah, three o'clock. And somebody. Now, I don't have a lead. I don't have somebody to play in the beginning. Um, she's away. I asked Hannah? her if she would. I asked Hannah. Oh. And, but she's out of town. Um, so we need, you know, um, uh, canned music. You know, or we need some kind of music. I have CDs. I could bring that. I, but we just need the the, the ability to play it. You know, using the bands. What time is the music for the band starting, though? Probably at five. Oh wait, they're starting four at five. To, it's four to six. Is there, there when they're? When do they start actually oh, no, playing? It's ninety minutes. It's ninety minutes, right? So, so it's ninety minutes. So they'll probably start at maybe four thirty. Yeah, something like that. Right. Is it ninety minutes of continuous play or ninety minutes with a factoring I, in I, a twenty-minute break? We specify that. You know, they're they're all older guys for the most part. I guess we just kind of let them do whatever. Well, I would, do you guys have a preference? If you have a preference, I would tell them and say you either want 90 minutes uninterrupted or it's okay to take an intermission. I mean, tell them. I, yeah, I but would, if we're saying 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock for the public, we should be kind of ready to start music by 4.15 at, at the latest, I would assume. Because people say, are coming. I would say 4.30. I mean, if, if you want it uninterrupted, it's 4.30 to 6. And if you want it within a, with an intermission, it could be 4.15. Yes. Yeah. I and then think we'll need 15 minutes of play music. In front. Yeah. I think that would be fine. Just the 15 and minutes. I have CDs I can bring. They can, okay. if we but if, if you're telling me to be there at 4 o'clock, I'm kind of expecting a show at like 4 or 5 or 10. Because then after that way, I'm kind of All thinking, right. okay. So then, then they, if you want they me there at 4.15, so wait, they got to start playing at 4.15. They got to be so set up that they're ready to play at 4.15. So then we're... Parks and Rec should be there at three o'clock. Yep. And at what time? Who is starting? Who is the greeting the band? And they should be there at like two or two fifteen. Who's greeting the band? I don't know. It's Paul, usually Paul's job. You want to you want to continue doing that job, Paul? No, I don't. <laughs> but I, but I, but I will. <laughs> well, because I mean, last time we ran into the issues of issues coming at one o'clock. So. Um, so they need access to the to the electrical box. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and if that could be unlocked. Oh yeah, I mean I'll be there early for, for when they would get there. 
Okay, so but I shouldn't be the I shouldn't be the one to greet them and, and so all that. You want I'm me to be? What to, can you find out what time they're going to arrive? I'll be there half an hour before they get there. No, but I I don't mind I I don't mind greeting them if okay. I know what time they're arriving. But I do okay. mind if I have to sit there and wait forty five minutes. I will find out and let you know. Thank you. I I, I want to I want to time it so that I I'm, I'm there and I wait five minutes and then they pull up. Okay. Okay. Um, I will bring green shirts for everyone. Bill, you have your shirt. Wade, you have your shirt. Paul, you have your shirt. Yeah. Jonathan and Peter. Caitlin, do you need a Parks and Rec shirt? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. I'll get you one. We do wear Parks and Rec uh, shirts to these events just because what we do is um, we kind of help control traffic and set everyone up. So we have to supplement public works. Uh, the committee members do for this. So if you can maybe plan on getting there a little early just to help out as well. Is that okay? Sounds good. Okay. Wait, did they ever make a formal request about uh, age? No, I, they seem to be okay with okay. whatever they have. So good. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're seeming to think that they can fit under mm -hmm. under the uh, stage. So yeah, I'm, I'm like, whatever. Hey, if they stand on the grass, they stand on the grass. So right, right, right. And so yoga in the park uh, is going very well. Actually, last night, George, you can tell yeah, it was we, huge. We um we had a fantastic turnout. The yoga in the park, what's great is every it's five thirty to six thirty every Wednesday. And each class has been different. Um, the all level yogas was phenomenal. The barless bar uh, last night was Zoom Beanie, which we had 29 children there. And we kept CDC guidelines, we kept distance in there. It was fantastic. Caitlin was there with her family. Oh my gosh. Um, but it, was, it was terrific. It, it was it was such a, a great gathering. There was a lot of different people. I was there another night for uh, for another yoga, not a children centered, but um, it, it seems like everyone, it's really getting a buzz and, and people are really excited about it. Um, I actually got some compliments from people who were saying, one realtor came up to me at the end and said that she has seen so many things that, that the council has done, such, such as the concerts, such as yoga in the park and all these other things that they were really excited for, that she felt that Newtown Square was sending out a really positive message. And she noticed through her clients that she starts selling Newtown as a great family and an active community. And wonderful. she thought that was a really great Ooh, thing. That's wonderful. That is very good to yeah. hear that. So, but they were very delighted to hear and a lot of us about the farmer's market. So a lot of great things, but um, Yoga in the Park has been just really been well received and everyone's loving it. So keep spreading the good word. George, any chance to get the digital yes. uh, sign? That's what I mean. Uh, Thursday, Friday, beginning Thursday. Concert. Yeah, for the concert. So for the for, you know, the for the concert. I know so it's I a knew week from today. It would be a, from a week from today. I know the chief of police has it on his calendar. Right. Okay. I, I just saw, don't know. I mean, I saw it in use. It's down right now on you know down by Camelot and Heather or whatever. I saw it at right. you know twenty five miles an hour. So yeah, uh, and I did ask for it a couple times for yoga in the park, and I did also ask for signs for yoga in the park to actually. It would be great, just like the farmer's market sign. I asked for two signs like that at, at Drexel Lodge Park to say Yoga in the Park series every Thursday, every Wednesday, just because it's nice with well, the families gonna, in there. Who's going to order them? Who's well, I asked Steve last week, last month at our Parks and Rec meeting, and I asked Steve to consider that. They were at like $50, 35 to $50. So they're the temporary yeah and, Blackard, and, uh, i mean but he'll just say yes or no right or well he said he was going to check check with george <laughs> um, okay what is the sign these are highway signs you know they they just like the farmer's market signs right we asked to have two type of signs like that at drexel lodge park one by the play area and one by the entrance and it was right. just basically saying yoga in the park series summer sounds sponsored by newtown township parks and rec and jolly Lama. Here, 5 30 and 6 30. Right. So he gave it a thumbs up. No, he said he was going to check with you. He didn't give approval or disapproval. He said he was going to check with you and let us know. Gotcha. Okay. Because the, I mean, once you get the approval, then the ordering of it was just a piece of case. It, but, well, that comes, we have to do that. I mean, they're not going to order it. Okay. Well, that's what, right. So where is that done? At Pegasus Purdue or whoever they got no, them from. The townships. The townships. Township usually, well, a lot of times. 
I use Pegasus because yeah. they're a member of the business association. Yeah. But, but you know, now um, the farmer's market is using somebody different. Um, you know, and I, I don't even know who they're using. Okay. But so I mean, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. Use whoever you want. I think want. it was going to have to come out of your budget, is probably why he. Yeah, that's that. fine. So uh, we're talking two fifty dollars Yeah, two signs. Just because we Two signs, $50 each. They were $35 to $50, depending upon how much graphics and artwork you do. And it's for yoga. It, it's for yoga in the park. Yes. Okay, yeah, you can get them done. Okay. All right. So tomorrow, when you see Pam Purser, ask her where she got the farmers from. Right. Well, I'm just going to do Pegasus because, like you said, they're a local right, community. Fine. He gave yeah, us a discount before. Yeah, he will. And I will just have to. Um, should right. I get it pay for it, George, and then have a reimbursement, or have him do a PO for you? Um, if we get an invoice, well, is it for Pegas if it's Pegasus? I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm going to do Pegasus because they can the bill you directly. Yeah, give me the bill. We, okay. we deal with them. All right. And all we're going to do is just similar to the signs that we have, same type of, you know, uh, just graphics and remind them. Keep it as simple as possible, limit the words because every word costs money, limit the colors and the graphics and try to keep it as reasonable as possible. Okay. No, but that's fine. If you just get me the invoice, we, okay. we, can, we can process it for them. So we would want those and they're just right by one by the play area and one by the entrance. You know, we figure yep. by that yep, area yep, yep. over by the pavilion. On that hillside. Yep. Right All below right. where the Drexel Lodge Park sign is. I, I think when you come along, right by when you come into the pavilion. You're talking area, about when you're in. Yeah. Because yeah. right on, they have that new box that you have set up, but people don't take the time a lot of times to read these particular things. Yeah, we the box is intended for the pavilion events, events itself, right. not the park right. events. The uh, But but that would be a fine spot to put it out yep. ahead of time. And again, it's a shame, but it doesn't help a lot to put the stuff out on Westchester Pike because right. people go by so fast. They just... Right. It, they see that there's a sign there, but they don't actually see it. But you're right. If you're pulling into the park, you've got the farmers the market signs are way too insignificant. I mean, you you know you can't read them. The concert in the park, the way Jonathan yeah, did that, Jonathan that's did a great good. job. That's good. That was, did you see him? Yeah. I've the seen them. Yeah. Yes, they're they up. look they're up. They're free, look really good. Free, free concert. concert in the park. Yeah, all yellow. June 12, four o'clock. Uh, that's good. And then next we have the obstacle course and uh, Brookside that Caitlin is working on. So I talked to George today, Caitlin, he's going to provide a catalog and or a website for us to review. I get for you to review. I'm, I'm just going to let you do this. Yeah, yeah you that's great. I can I can go through the catalog. I have a couple ideas and, you know, just to make sure I'm looking at price points, too. Um, I don't know if you if we're thinking about uh, reaching out to, what's the name on Reese Road Recreation? General Recreation. General Recreation. Yeah, if we're thinking about reaching out to General Recreation about the shades or, you know, if you, anything future, I don't know if we want to kind of reach out to them too about obstacle equipment or they, they have a, they have a, they have a lot, they have a really uh, a lot of options. So, you know, I don't know if that's something that we want to consider just reaching out to them first or going through, we can go through the catalog, just throwing that out there. I mean, I think it's great to reach out to them. It is perfect if they're co-stars. It, it, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, and again, what we're looking at is items for the capital budget for next year. And we're working on that budget already. This isn't something I suspect that we'll have funds budgeted for this year. It's something that we're going to be looking for. This is the plan that, that we can make the submission in the in the capital for next year. But yeah, I, I think general recreation would be great to reach out to. What type of money are we talking here? So that's what, you know, I think what we need to do is, is give them some chunk, some rough order or magnitude estimate to the supervisors or put in the budget for next year. And we can define it more as the year goes along. Is that is that okay? so? We're pretty soon we're going to be doing the capital portion of the budget. I'm, I'm presuming, Rich, that's correct. Okay, so pretty soon we're doing that. Yes, we're going to want a dollar figure, but we're going to want something to go with it. So we don't want to just make a presentation and say, "Oh, I want a hundred dollars for something." You know, you want to you want to be able to say, "I'm asking for a hundred dollars, and this is what I'm asking for," and and that sells the the idea of, of, of what it is. So, you know, if we if it's general recreation or if 
with voice associates or, or whoever it would wind up being that you could start putting together what it is that you want it to look like and this is you know this is the the, the budget uh, the, the estimate that we're getting for it then that's what we can present that Caitlin, make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Caitlin, what type of numbers are you hearing for a basic system versus a more medium sized obstacle course system I mean, it's it's probably going to be around a thousand dollars. I think by the time you install it, and you know, we were talking about using wood chip base, which I know that we have already. But um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be like a couple hundred. I think it's going to be around a thousand. And and Caitlin, I would say, you know, we can we can talk or or you know meet out there at some point if you want to kind of spot out what you have in mind because. You know, I don't know if we're talking about this size piece and then this size piece, or if it's a little more basic you've got in mind, but, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of options out there. Like there's one uh, piece that's really nice. It's, a, it's like a wavy rock wall. Um, it doesn't look like it would need a ton as far as installation. Um, you might not even need the wood chip bed underneath, but maybe. Uh, and then, you know, and then there's other things. There's the, kind of the you know, the stools that are low to the ground. Um, so depending on, you know, I, I can I can mock up a cheaper version and like a, a dream version, uh, you know, not too expensive, but, um, and and then, you know, see what what money's in the budget. Are these all commercial grade? Because we have to have ADA compliance and commercial grade for everything. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna be like, a, you know, a log or, or anything. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be a lab or anything like that. It'll be uh, commercial grade equipment. Hey, Lynn, if you need me to help with anything at all, just let me know. I'm, I'm available. Um, so do you, should I knock on Reese's door and, and talk with them? And if I do, do you want to go with me or do you want me? To, how do you want to handle that? Yeah, that sounds good. I have a couple, I saw a couple things on their website. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I would definitely do that with you. Okay. Um, and just as park and rec, I think it's great if you have a relationship with them. If you, if you know, they know who you are and, and you know who they are. I think that's just a win, whether you purchase from them or not. Wait, aren't they on Greer Park? No. Wait, uh, um, no, no, okay. they're not, they're in, okay. no, okay. no, no, okay. nope. I did look at their work. Uh, they do work all over the place. Oh. The partnerships. Um, so I, I did write a letter up to uh, Tina, uh, Dr. Tina, uh, I think it is. Payne. Uh, Payne, yes. And my wife read it. She said it doesn't have enough pizzazz or something. So I have to rewrite it. <laughs> And I, I'll kind of use that as some kind of standard and just revise it a little bit, send it out to other. And then what would the partnership be for, like to get them to work on community-based projects or what? Anything. Okay. Let's do anything, right? Okay. Maybe they, if we have something, an idea, if they have an idea, let's get together and talk about it. If anyone has any ideas, just throw them out. Um, in Brookside, we reviewed Brookside, and so you know, since we went through the trouble of looking at all this, and we're familiar with it. Can we? Should we be updating the website now? I think you have um, someone there, right, that can help possibly with uh, updating the, the website. Yeah, me, absolutely, we should update it. Sure. So, if we were going to take photographs, um, would you prefer we use the photo? The, the camera from the township to take those photographs? I don't think it has. I mean, we, we could actually, I don't know, does the township have a camera? So what's her name that just left? Uh, to come and take the pictures, remember? Yeah, I don't know if she, I don't know if that was a township camera or her. Oh. Kathy's <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I know, uh, I don't yeah. know the extent of the bill. I got to tell you the truth. I mean, when a lot of the pictures on the website I took with my camera, okay. or with my with my phone, right. yeah. they're you know right. I think they're fine. All right, we'll just use the phone then. Yeah. All right. So I just thought we would update that, and then the next um, park 
the review is it's a newbie has a lot of issues there's mischief mm. there you know i like newbie park i was just there day before yesterday yeah newbie needs some tea else it too. does i thought it yeah was... we've, we've had a lot of vandalism down there well i like the way all those uh, plants have grown right around the fencing right at the very top that's filled in beautifully i was sort of really taken away at how nicely it's grown in that hillside is covered with vegetation it used to be bare and yep. full of erosion and uh, you know i was impressed uh, well you did all that <laughs> i mean well, it's awesome. i mean but one never knows when you plant the stuff if it's going to take yeah you just plug it in and then you, you <laughs> right. but it took <laughs> but that was good so what are the issues at new because i think with all the talk of greer park we got to make sure that each park feels valuable and is taken care of and feels like the community is investing in it. So what can we do to give new, newbie some attention and TLC that it needs as well? I mean, I think you need to state a police officer. I, the problem at newbie is vandalism. And, and the problem is the location where somebody can cause trouble and then right. run out into yep. another township right. right up the hill. Right. And I mean, both grills are now, we're not gonna bother putting them back for the time being both because what? both grills have been ripped out of the ground and keep in mind they're in the cement yeah. and they have they have ripped both of them out more than once just within the last couple of weeks that's important the hand sanitizer stations keep getting ripped out and they're just gone the the welcome sign on the lower side down by doe lane yeah. uh, we've we kept it there but they they scratched it up and and ripped the lamination off of the front because it, it used to have a lamination on it and uh it's still legible, so we're not replacing it at this point, but it's it's lost a lot of its like reflective character. Right. We used to have a wood one down there, but then that one got destroyed. So it, it's a lot of those kind of issues that, that we've been having down there. And again, it's a you know, it's a location that it, you know, we, we have to deal with a lot of broken glass on the basketball yes. court and, and those kind of things. You still keep on top of it, Ooh. we still visit it, we still clean it, we you know, we we attend to it, but we're not stationed there 24 right. seven, making sure that nobody's causing mischief. Why don't you put a pole with a camera? Whether it's Civil liberties. Civil liberties. <laughs> yeah, sign saying there's a camera. Yeah. Well, no, just a camera. Let people think there's. <laughs> I, I mean, I would say if, if the park and rec department had a recommendation, they should bring it to the police department. Well, if, if it's being damaged and the residents can't enjoy their park without having to deal with glass and other issues, it's something that Parks and Rec should take a look at and, and bring to the attention of the police chief because, you know, George can only say so much. And if we if we have information that lets them know that our residents can't enjoy the park or not are able to enjoy it to its full glory, then we should be advocating for more police services. And the police are, are well aware down there. I mean, they were... We report it to them every time there's a vandalism incident right. so that we can get right. a, a written report on it. And, it's, and I'm sure they're doing a great job. It just is making them aware if they're in that area to just do a drive by and maybe up the presence, especially during the time when damage is being done. Well, and they do. I mean, they're they're there regularly. And I think if the Park and Rec Board wanted to make a recommendation on something like that, that should that should go to the, the police department. All right, so I guess so we'll right. look at that next, if that part is it. That Do you think that uh, painting the ball court is upgrading it? So we had originally been planning on painting it, but then the the able basketball court kind of kept growing in in how and what its scope was going to be so the, the we kept the we kept the funds tied up that we made sure we had enough money for the whole gable project right and until the gable project is done we're not even going to try to do the newbie park one even though that was just a painting it was just a straight up painting uh but does we it don't get want players to... does it get basketball players or is it just kids drinking on the back no they, they people play basketball up there Okay. But then they get people drinking and breaking glass okay. too. And also, there is you get a lot of washout. So you so, that so area. I think one of you guys, one of the members, you know, including you, Caitlin, somebody from Parks and Rec should write the note. Yeah. I mean, it should not be Sheila and me that yeah. write the note to the police. 
advocating. I mean, I think well, you, you should ask for a police a, a, camera. A camera, a camera is cheaper than having somebody go there all the time. Yeah. You know, I think that I, I would recommend that the park and rec make newbie the focus of some attention for the next month. Yeah. Okay. And and then based on your own observations, I mean, because you're you're going off of my reports to you, which is appropriate, but you can make your own recommend, you, you know, your own visits, your own observations, and then you could add all that together. And if at that point you think a camera is appropriate, if you think a, a, a discussion with the police department's appropriate, then then you take it from there. But at least you'll have some of your own firsthand account. Yeah, and I've heard from other residents that they felt like other parks were getting attention and they did not feel that Newbie was getting attention. So it's really important that we just make people realize that newbie is important and we just kind of give it the attention it deserves. I mean, newbie, we've given newbie a lot of attention. And we've put, so no, I'm saying from Parks and Rec's perspective. It, I, I know you are. But we but put money into I, newbie. I see it. And, and I just was showing it to somebody. Uh, you know, and I, I think it's it, it looks great. The fencing around all those uh, steep slopes, wonderful. It's all good. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, so- and I did not walk up to the basketball. Swing set. Yeah, yeah the swing yeah. set was new. We, we refreshed the, the other equipment down there. So, it's, it's, you know, it's always unfortunate to hear that people would say that we're not doing something because we are. But at the same point, you know, if there's if there's vandalism down there, then that's something that, right. that I think that the police department- Maybe there's something we can do. No, maybe there's something positive we can do. I don't know. Sometimes well, I feel like you know, like society's problems are everyone's problems. If they are, we all. So maybe something like like you said, a um, kind of even a kind of going there and cleaning up or doing something like that might even spark. I would visit with the immediate neighbors. Yep. Yeah, but and, just and ask them. I bet you they have ideas. Yep. Because they probably know exactly what time of day it's. You know, one forty-five until three. Yep. <laughs> they probably they have it down to that because <laughs> the, their dogs bark when their people walk by. And right. Stuff. Yeah, but just just put eyes on it a few times. All right. A, a few additional times. I know everybody in Park Rock's been there before, but I mean, you know, just put. And again, you were saying you were going to make newbie maybe the next one we'd be focused on and update the website on. So we'll just take the opportunity to spend more time. Yep. And if if you know I or one of my staff can join you when you go. That, that's fine. Just let us know. We'll, we'll jump there with you. All right. Does anyone else have anything else, sir? Um, I do. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, so there's a thought of foot. This is just a thought of foot. <laughs> okay. Nothing much happening. Um, I was in a, in a meeting with uh, John D'Alessandro, the owner of Luigi and Giovanni, and he surfaced the idea of having a street party at St. Albans Circle. And I mentioned it to George this morning. And George said, what about closing instead of the whole circle? What about closing Chapel Road? This is not a park, but it could be considered recreation. But I just want to throw out, you're the first person that I would throw it out to, but, and it could be something in September and it would fold in really nicely to what Gather in the Circle is trying to do with, um, you know, of more visibility, more, more uh, people-friendly stuff. At, uh, at St. Albans Circle. And it, you know, now that I've thought about it just a little bit from what George said, I really love the idea of closing Chapel Road, yeah. leaving the circle open and having like a, a, a people could dance, people could, you know, there would be an ice cream vendor. Uh, it could be really cute. And it would be, you know, right around, um, right after Labor Day when people come back. Like, like a heart, you could even make it later September, like a harvest moon festival or something like that. You could, but it, you know, it gets cool quickly. Yeah. You know? it, it does get, it cools down. Which really Bill quickly. had talked about, what, a year and a half ago, I think. Uh, remember he, he talked about having like a, a farmer kind of uh, Western kind of thing. Oh, uh, country and Western, yeah. yeah. Western. Harvest, you know, the harvest thing would go with that if we brought, if oh. we did do a band, we would probably need a, Country Western, Bluegrass. So, Americana. do you have a band? Is there a band that you have heard that, that that's in the wings that we just don't have the funds to do? I mean, is there a band that you want to that you want to recommend? Because my next stop is going to Linda McIsaac. So the Bluegrass band that we had at Drexel Lodge Park would fit. I, I don't. 
so how helpful any band is right now. It's becoming uh, it's becoming clear that the music has to appeal to young people because the young people will bring the old people. Right. And if we if we try to get music that only appeals to the more senior people, the young people are, won't come around. So yesterday I had someone contacted Rick uh, Slagle. Uh, oh, Nick. Nick, Nick. Nick Slagle. Yeah about his son has a band. So Nick gave him my number and he called me and we talked yesterday and then I texted with him today and the kid actually sent me some stuff. I haven't really looked at it yet. But he's in like school rock, he's 17 years old. He's got two bands. He's played, you know, some pretty big places and um, he's got a bunch of awards. He's friends with Pantera's uh, bassist who's like a heavy metal band. <laughs> But you know, but that's, he plays all kinds that's of music. the profile. I, to me, that's the, if we want. He has a following, a young following. If, and, and He's if from we, Broomall. And you see that, it, 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 and these kids, they all jump on Twitter and Instagram and, right. and they, the what word kind of gets out. What kind of music? I think he'll, they play, you know, kind of anything. They'll, cut, they'll do covers. They right. kind of bend their. But his his love, I think, is kind of like a heavy metal or, heavy or metal. rock. So when you mean when you say young, are you talking like a young couple, like in their twenties, thirties, or are you talking younger, like teenage? Because teenage will bring different issues that maybe we might not want to attract. So I'm only concerned about like what what are we trying to go for the target market here? So I'm probably thinking earlier than twenty. I probably am thinking the fifteen to thirty five. Hmm. I mean, it came out of this conversation. I was over with Steve Neese and Tina Roberts Lightcap, and Tina Roberts Lightcap say it was her words. I mean, this isn't my idea. This is her idea, but I agree with it. And she said, if you don't get the young people, right, it's you're 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 flirting with the dud yeah. because the old people might come and then they kind of nod their get heads a little tired. bit and then they take their beach chairs and go home. And you really, <laughs> and, but you really want the kids that swarm around and get into it, and you know, right. That's kind of the party has got to be young. Yeah. yeah, but I don't see heavy metal. I don't see. No, I, don't think, I don't think he, he does, does have heavy, to play heavy metal. Okay. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't. Did, did he give you? Did he send you? I, I haven't he, been able to pull them up, so I have to go on my computer to do it. So, so, but he sent you something like a YouTube or something like that. Yes, links to YouTube, but I. I so you can send that around to the to the members, right, yes. and to Sheila and me. Yes, you could listen to. I mean, we have time, you know, it's just an, a, a thought. That, and that's, you're talking September. This, this coming September. Okay, so we'll Walk for the Wounded contacted us. They want to do uh, September 12th benefit event in Brooklyn West Park with the National Country Western Star. So we're in the preliminary stages of talking with well, that's them. That's excellent. You're going to get what you want, but not what you want. <laughs> it, is, it is a big, big name. Yeah. Yes. I think tickets are hundred dollars each or something, but they're but they're helping the wounded. It's so. hundred dollar tickets they're going to sell, yes, and that okay. covers the well, that's cool. food and that's really good stuff. So that date is not the date. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. that September would be a, 12th, right? it could be any date but that date. Okay. <laughs> right. So um, that's important to know. You know, the September twelfth is off the table. Yeah, they were out last week at the park. Okay. Uh, George was there. And, uh, Yes, they were there and they were impressed. Yeah. Yeah, we think we can make it work. We're pretty okay. sure. But, you know, it's not that definite yet. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. So, guys, last time we, before COVID, we had, we were going to have two concerts a year for Parks and Rec. Are we still staying with just one this year because we're coming out of COVID or are we going to look for two a year? What are, what are the thoughts? So, you know, she would, I'll tell you, quite frankly, the, the, the fundraising is it's just daunting. It's yeah. brutal. Yeah. If we could get, something at St. Albans Circle, I would go to gather in the circle. I'm co-chair of that. Yeah, and, and, I would, and there is money there. And this is for to make it more pedestrian friendly. Yeah. And that sits in, I mean, that has a chairman, Linda McIsaac, and I would propose it to her and to Pam right. Purser and see if right. they would, well, right. if gather could. Well, could. also then you have, Luigi could, could provide the food. There's so many benefits to having a space like that. I just want to see what the Parks and Rec wants to do. You know, I mean, I would know. like to have it, but I, it's hard yeah. for me to, uh, to do it all. I don't well, I mean, you know, and you'll see, you know, when we go to Delmont, I mean, people are willing to open their wallets to a degree. Yes. But when I, I mean, what I'm have to ask, you know, 
I sort of laugh and say, wait a minute, you know, like, um, it's not that easy. Right. right. Yeah. All right. Which one? We're going to have two in September. June. Oh, June 12th. Yes. I'm already in yes. September. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have two in September. I think that's going to be kind of exciting. I think that will be exciting. Yeah, it would be. And, and that adds, you know, that fits with what the realtor was saying. You yeah. know, there's I would say later September, because if that's the 12th, give yourself some time in between. Because a, week, a week later, but not two much. Weeks. I would say the end of September. Be really cool. The, the twenty, be... the twenty seventh of September. You get into you know that last weekend of September. Fifth, I want to say. Yeah, the whatever. So, the, so whatever. the thing is, is that then it should be a daytime thing. It should be. It should start like at noon and end at four. Or something like that. Oh, okay. You know, like you want to catch the rays. You want to catch when the sun is the warmest. Okay. Right. You know, instead of everybody bundled up and. Right. It gets right. cold once that sun yeah. sets. Yeah. Right. So maybe a one to five. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, you look at that. Okay. Um, did I, I send it to George and, and wait? I cc'd you on it. There was somebody who was. Um, did you find anything out about that individual who was using the address for Greer, Drexel Lodge Park as a um, two day? Was that legit? They. I actually turned that over to somebody else in the office, and they were investigating it. Yeah, I, I don't think it was legit. I think I don't, I don't think it was. And legit the scary either. part is, somebody was using it was only because I know the address of Drexel Lodge Park that I caught on to it. That somebody was advertising Drexel Lodge Park, at, the address of it, as having a host of a two-day community market fair, and they were looking for vendors. And greatly concerning that they were making um, seventy dollars off of these poor vendors, so they were using Newtown Township's farmers market, creating a confusion in the marketplace by making it look like it was Newtown Square, using the dates of July, and they were on Facebook uh, offering this. So I did send it to George. But what concerned me most is the fraudulent use of township resources. I think it might be the golf course. No, it was. I pulled up the address. It was the, right. the address of Drexel okay. Lodge Park. Right. So, listen, um, the September 12th is a Sunday. You're aware of that? No. Um, it's a, a Sunday. I'm pretty sure that's the date they gave us. So it's a Sunday. I thought you said the 12th. You said the 12th. That's a Sunday. So we could do the 25th, which is a Saturday for an, another band. It doesn't have to be that okay. band. I mean, until we hear we're it. We're looking at the 25th. All right. right. But we're looking at the 25th. All right. Wait, pull Excuse up your, your schedule because you have it on your, you have the wounded thing on your list of accomplishments. Pull up the date because you have it right there. You know the flyer you distributed? Oh, then, I, then I messed up on my flyer. Okay. Okay. Whatever date you have on the flyer is that would be your date. Pull up your flyer on that because that list of accomplishments you sent out. All right. All right, we'll look at it later. I'll fix it if it needs fixing. No, I'm just want to make sure it fall is planning a concert around that time that we're not competing for the same weekend. Twenty fifth. That's the next weekend. Um, I don't. <laughs> he has the. He's got to check the date of when he already agreed to the. I don't. I don't have it. I don't remember. Okay. You know, I put it on Facebook. I don't think I sent it out. Okay, let me. I see if I can pull it up. All right. Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. You um, you've got it for nine twelve on there. Okay. Okay. That's what I think it is. Nine twelve. Okay. September twelve. All right. Great. Well, I guess we're adjourned. Yes. Yay. Thank you, Caitlin. All right. Thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you very much.